thank you very much, uh, Major General Steve Newman. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be here this evening at Watson's Mill. Is it hot enough for you? If you think this was bad, you should have seen the pressure this past week at Queen's Park. I can tell you, we had to have a little bit of the Pee and Carlton common sense down there. And this is not in my script, but I'm going to tell you something we did great yesterday. Many of you know that I nominated Helene Campbell, our local hero for organ donation awareness for Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal. And I was pleased, a week before the uh, Prince Charles came to Canada, the Prime Minister himself had his office call me to see if I could donate my medal to him. Can you believe that? The Prime Minister, so he owes me big time one day. In any event, we had Helene at Queen's Park yesterday. And I had MPPs and staff from all three political parties take to the grand staircase at Queen's Park. And in the next room where they were, and literally the next room where they were fighting over the budget and a possible election crisis, we stood with Helene and we danced on the staircase and we sang Old Canada. And lady that and gentlemen, that's how great our province is. Yeah. Well, family, families and friends, I see we have honored guests in Councillor Bob Manette and Councillor Doug Thompson here today. To our much respected Major General Steve Noonan, who led Canadian forces in Afghanistan, uh, a decorated veteran of our war there, and most importantly to our great Canadians today, who are about to receive an honour from Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II in the form of her Diamond Jubilee Medal. I'm honoured today to present medals on behalf of the Government of Ontario, but also from my friend and federal colleague, the Honourable Marjorie LeBreton, the government leader in the Senate. I also want to make special mention that how proud I am our former member of Parliament is to be here, Bill Tupper. And it's very nice of you to be here, Mr. Tupper, but you're also a medal recipient. And you'll find out why in a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the Diamond Jubilee Medal is awarded to Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth subjects. To those Canadians who have made a significant impact in our communities, in our provinces, and across our great nation. Now here in the PM Carleton at Watson's Mill, near the Cradle of Confederation, and in our greatest, greatest province of Ontario, we are honoring our own tonight in our nation's capital. This medal presented today represents extraordinary achievement by outstanding and ordinary Canadians. My only wish is that I had more medals because as I look out today, there are so many more who are so deserving. Those receiving the Diamond Jubilee Medal tonight represent many facets of Canadian society. In fact, they represent many different facets of our own Ottawa community. We have with us tonight soldiers, veterans from the World War II and Korean War. We have public servants healthcare professionals, farmers, and children's advocates. In this room, we have the capacity to cure cancer. We also have the hope to protect Ontario and Canada's most vulnerable. Tonight's recipients represent all that is good about Canada. They do so largely outside the public spotlight and for little or no recognition at all. You will be inspired this evening and you will take heart with the fact that great people, everyday people, extraordinary people walk among us and they are who make communities Canada. Tonight, the medal that we present is beautiful. Like the Queen, we are honoring herself and that it commemorates. It depicts her 60 years of service to Canadians and the Commonwealth. The maple leaf on the medal refers to Canada, while the motto, the Vat Regina, means long live the Queen. Like many of you, but some of you who endured this period in our nation's history, I can remember hearing stories from my grandparents about the day that King George VI died. He was a man who led us through the Second World War. He helped to save civilization from a monstrous evil. I'm told by my grandparents that when that happened, people mostly learned of his death 
from those who were running outside because of devastation and shock. And they told their neighbors that our king had died. Now we see a snapshot in that great movie, The King's Speech. It's a very popular movie. And what we saw there was a selfless courage, a determination, and a wisdom. He passed those great qualities on to his daughter. Selfless courage, determination, wisdom. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II became queen on the 6th of February, 1952. On her accession to the throne that year, she became head of the Commonwealth and queen of seven independent countries, including Canada. She has been with Canada during some of our greatest days and when we needed her the most. She was there through the last part of the Korean War, our centennial celebrations in 1967. She was there for the repatriation of our Constitution in 1982. And ladies and gentlemen, in our time of need, when we sold, sent soldiers to Afghanistan, she was there with us too. She is our queen and we are her loyal subjects. Her reign of 60 years is the second longest for any British monarch. Only Queen Victoria has reigned longer for 63 years. It must be because they're women. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But ladies and gentlemen, in, in, in all honesty, we do hope that she breaks that record. So, as we honor tonight some of our most cherished citizens over here, for the great work that they have done for Ottawa, for Ontario, and for Canada. Please join me in saying very proudly, the Vat Regina, or, ladies and gentlemen, join me, long live the Queen. Thank you.